the situation's been spiralling out of control since late last night, just before I went to bed. The Georgian president, Saakashvili, had called for a ceasefire and promised that the South Ossetians could have quite wide autonomy, provided they stayed in Georgia. And then through the night, the Georgians attacked the South Ossetian capital of Skinvali, and we woke up this morning to a full-scale war going on, the hospital in flames, the university in flames. We, we don't know the casualties yet, but no doubt they will be quite high. And then through the day, of course, the Russians responded. The Russian peacekeepers were actually attacked in Skinvali. That, of course, was quite a mistake by the Georgians. The Russians are now sending heavy armor into South Ossetia. Russian jets have been bombing an airport close to Tbilisi. And in China, where Prime Minister Putin is uh, at the opening ceremony for the Olympic Games, he's saying, well, it's inevitable, of course, that Russia will respond. South Ossetians and the Georgians have been sort of sniping at each other now for quite a while. And both sides are really up for it, actually. Patience just seems to have snapped for some reason today. It all really goes back to February this year when the West recognized Kosovo. And Russia said that was a big mistake because it would set a precedent for lots of other little areas that want it to be independent. And Russia then proceeded to give a fair amount of encouragement to the Georgian separatists. And so that this trouble has been brewing basically since February, and now it's all come to a head. I'm not mincing my words anymore. In my story today, I'm writing that Russia and Georgia are at war. But it could escalate even further because... Other former Soviet republics, for example, Kazakhstan, which has expressed some support for Russia today, could come in on the side of Russia. And Georgia is very much the underdog. It's a very small country compared with Russia. The EU and NATO um, are sort of flapping in, in Brussels and calling for an end to the violence. Uh, the International Olympic Committee in Beijing is calling for a truce for the duration of the Games. But unfortunately, the process has started now. The tanks are going in, the jets are bombing, the emotions are very high. Hotheads on both sides are sort of fanning the flames and getting the emotions higher and higher. And it, it's not going to be easy to take a step back now, I'm afraid.